Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today we're going to do something that's totally not related to the Instant Pot in any way whatsoever. No, we're going to make this little thing called fried chicken. Do you see this? Do you see how beautiful this is? How flaky and delightful this is and golden brown? I made this myself in the easiest possible way. It is full of flavor. It is the juiciest fried chicken you're ever gonna have and you're all gonna be doing it so easily. You're gonna be pinching yourself saying, I can't believe I made this myself and everyone's gonna be worshiping you for it. So guys, this chicken is so easy. It's easier than crossing the road to get to the other side. Let's go, the best fried chicken ever. So the first step in making the best fried chicken you can possibly make is by brining the chicken itself. And I'm telling you right now, this is one of the most important steps because it creates super, super tender, ridiculously juicy chicken full of flavor. So try not to skip this step, all right? It's worth it. What I wanna do is I wanna take a really nice size bowl here, a pretty big one, and I wanna fill it up with eight cups of cold water. And how we're gonna season this is really up to you, but this is what I like to do. I feel like it gives it maximum flavor. But again, you can really do whatever you want. Some people like to also use buttermilk. I think water is totally fine, by the way. The next thing I like to add to this is one cup of dill pickle juice. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. And now I'm gonna season it up with four tablespoons of seasoned salt. And I like to use Lowry's for this. I've always loved to use Lowry's seasoned salt anytime I use seasoned salt. It looks like this. It's the kind that comes in the red bottle or the red canister or the red container, whatever. Two tablespoons of a Creole or Cajun seasoning or a Louisiana seasoning. And for that, I use Tony Shasheries, and you can get this anywhere online. One tablespoon of cayenne pepper. Now, I know this stuff is super spicy and a tablespoon sounds like much, but I'm telling you, it's really not gonna add any spice to it. It's just gonna add some great flavor. One tablespoon of onion powder and one tablespoon of garlic powder or granulated garlic. And now I'm gonna stir everything up inside of the bowl. And now I wanna focus on our chicken. Guys, you can really use any kind of chicken you want between three to five pounds worth, I would use. But whatever you use, make sure that you have the skin on the chicken. Skin is critical in terms of fried chicken, obviously. Here, I'm only gonna be using drumsticks because we love drumsticks. We also love thighs. Some people also want breasts. Some people like wings. You can use any kind of chicken but I'm just going for drumsticks right now. Although I'll admit, I would have used thighs if I could find some thighs right now. However, I couldn't find any with the skin on today in the market, so drumsticks it is. I'm just gonna add all of my chicken into the brine. Okay, perfect. And just make sure the chicken is nice and submerged in our brine. Now I wanna cover my bowl that all of my chicken is sitting in, and we're gonna pop this in the fridge, guys, for a minimum of eight hours and up to 24. The more the chicken sits in the brine, the better it's gonna taste, and the more tender and absolutely just to die for delicious it'll be. So again, eight hours to 24 hours inside of the refrigerator, covered, and then we're gonna take it back out of there and we're gonna fry this up. You guys, literally, this is half the recipe right here. This is all you had to do. So the sooner we brine, the quicker we can fry. So when we're ready to fry our chicken, what we wanna do is we wanna take either a deep fryer, which I personally always use when I fry my chicken, I feel like it's the easiest, and they're very affordable, by the way, or you can absolutely also use either a Dutch oven on your stove, as well as a tall stock or soup pot. Either one is totally fine. And how much oil you're gonna use is dependent upon how deep anything you're using is. If you're using a Dutch oven or a stock pot, you don't wanna go any higher in the oil level than the middle of the pot itself. Same with the deep fryer, you don't wanna go past the max line. The reason for that is because once we drop the chicken into the pot, the volume itself will rise and we don't want it to splatter anywhere when it begins to boil. And the oil of choice that I use for this, guys, is canola oil. If you can use canola oil, try to get that. So I'm going to pour this in, and this is three quarts worth, by the way. And now I'm going to heat my oil up to 375 degrees. Now you can do the same thing when you're doing it on the stovetop. Make sure you have a thermometer, a candy thermometer, or something of that nature. Something like this you'd use when you were monitoring this on the stove in a Dutch oven or in a soup pot. And this is gonna take about 20 minutes to heat up. So now while the oil's heating up, we wanna focus on creating our very simple but incredibly flavorful batter. The first thing I wanna add is going to be flour. I wanna use three cups of all-purpose flour. Now we're gonna season it up, and this is what's gonna give it so much additional amazing flavor. I wanna use one tablespoon of seasoned salt. This is the same brand that I used before, Lowry's, when I brine the chicken. 
A half a tablespoon of a Creole Cajun or Louisiana seasoning like I did with the brine. I like Tony Chachery's Creole for this. If you don't want to use anything of this nature, you can just substitute for another half a tablespoon of seasoned salt. Two teaspoons of garlic powder or granulated garlic. Two teaspoons of onion powder. And you can see this is very similar to what we put into the brine so far. Two teaspoons of black pepper. And this is totally optional if you don't want to have a little bit of a spice to it. It's not going to be very spicy at all, I promise. Two teaspoons of cayenne pepper. And I know it seems like there might be a lot of cayenne in there, but I'm telling you it won't be very spicy at all. In fact, if you want it to be super spicy, you're going to want to add in like two tablespoons of cayenne pepper. All right, now let's take a whisk and just combine everything and mix it together. Perfect. Moving on. Okay, and it's been 20 hours since I last put my chicken in the refrigerator, and I'm now taking it out, and I'm going to take the lid off here, and there it is, the chicken all nice and brined. The flavor is going to be amazing. It's going to be ridiculously tender to the point of it just melting in your mouth. All right, guys, so there's the chicken, and my oil's heated up because on the deep fryer, the thing that's great is it tells you when it's ready at the temperature. We want it again between 365 and 375. Anywhere in that range is totally fine. And I'll put this uh, thermometer in here just to be able to gauge the temperature exactly. And we are at 372 when I took it out. It's going to immediately start to drop, obviously, because it's no longer in hot liquid. We're ready to go. And we're going to want to use one of these guys, again, if you were using a Dutch oven or a soup pot or a stock pot to do this, to make sure of the temperature. And again, the deep fryer heats up in about 20 minutes. It might take a little bit longer on the stove. You want to do this over like a medium-high heat when you're heating up the oil. It could take between 30 to 40 minutes sometimes on the stove. So again, it's all about having one of these digital thermometers and that will tell you when you're all set and ready to go. You never want to drop chicken in oil that's not preheated, okay? So now I have my brine chicken, my flour mixture, and a plate. Because all I'm going to do now is take the chicken from the brining and I'm going to then dredge it completely inside of the flour. Literally, just pack it in there just like this and we want it fully coated. If you have some skin flapping open like this, get that skin coated, all of it. We want the more coating on the chicken, the better and the more flaky, amazing friedness it's gonna be. All right, so just like that, that should look. And do this with all the chicken. Again, you see this, if I peel it back a little bit, let's make sure we get that part too. And don't worry about putting the chicken directly in the flour. We're gonna throw this out when we're done with it. We're not gonna like save this. I mean, if you wanted to save it, you would obviously not put the chicken directly in it. You put it in a bag and shake it around, but I feel like it's so much easier to do it this way. And as you can see, I'm just using my right hand to dredge the chicken. It makes less mess that way. And there you have it, guys. I have four chicken legs right here, drumsticks, all coated in my flour, generously coated. We really want it packed on there. And I'm not going to do them all at once. I'm only going to coat them right when I'm ready to fry them. I don't want them to really just sit there like this. I want to basically immediately drop them into the oil once I've coated them. So we'll do all of these in batches. All right, so if you're using a deep fryer, it likely comes with a basket which is very convenient for this. And if you're using a Dutch oven or a stock pot, you would just use some tongs and it was gonna drop it directly in there. So what I'm gonna do is before I put the basket in, I'm going to simply lay my chicken in the basket. I should be able to get about four pieces and I'm gonna crisscross them in there so they fit more nicely. And now I'm gonna carefully lower my basket into the fryer. There we go. And I'm gonna let this deep fry for 12 to 14 minutes. And we're about halfway through here, guys. This has been about six minutes, and it's already looking amazing, and we're getting a nice golden crispy brown. Halfway there, another six to go. And we've now reached 12 minutes of frying time, so I'm gonna take my chicken out from the oil. This is why I love using a deep fryer, guys. The little basket here is so easy. However, if we were using a Dutch oven or a stock pot or a soup pot, I would just take out the chicken with some tongs. And now I wanna take my thermometer here, and I want to make sure that my chicken is at 165 degrees temperature. That will show that it's done. So I'm putting it in there. And look at this, guys. I'm at 172. I'm fine. So now I'm going to take some tongs here. Oh, look at how beautiful and golden brown this chicken is. And I'm going to put it on a plate. Whoops, it's a little bit shaky here. There we go. Look at that. Oh, listen to that crunch. Just from, mmm. Mm, look at that beautiful golden brown fried chicken. All right, let's let this rest for five minutes on the plate before we even start to dig in. And now what I can do is I'm going to dredge the rest of my chicken in the flour and then continue the process. Do it in batches. And then we're going to immediately drop it in as soon as we coat it up. And there we go. Batch two all through. 
Ooh, look at how beautiful this chicken is, guys. And I should have mentioned this before. You should line whatever you're laying your chicken in with some paper towels because we want to make sure all the grease gets sopped up by the towels. We don't want the chicken to be sitting in the grease in the bowl. And here goes batch three. All right, that's all my chicken. I had 12 legs here. And batch three is also all complete. We're done, guys. We fried all of this chicken and it couldn't look more delicious. And there we have it, guys. All of our fried chicken, golden brown, to the perfect crisp exterior, and the most amazing, juicy, melt-in-your-mouth interior. Let's try it out. All right, guys, and here's my fried chicken. Let's try it out. Look at this. Just look at this. This is like something I got from a restaurant. Let's try it. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, all right, first off, did you hear the crunch? Look at the inside of this chicken. Look at how juicy this chicken is. Juicy! Mm, that is some tasty chicken right there. Incredibly flavorful. It's hot, as you can see. It's hot. This fried chicken is knuckle-sucking good, all right? That's how good this is. Mm. It's so good. Banjo is literally licking my toes right now in hopes that he can taste the chicken go through my entire body. Oh wow, the chicken, the chicken itself is the most flavorful, like butter chicken you've ever had. The outside is the perfect crisp. The consistency couldn't be more perfect. The texture, the seasonings, anything you would want in a fried chicken right here. And it could not have been easier to make at all. Richard, come over here and try this out. You're southern, you have to try it. If you want hot sauce on it, put hot sauce on it. No. Mm. Very crunchy. It's very what? Crunchy. C crunchy. <laughs> I'm nervous because he's a southerner and he's eating the fried chicken and he knows his fried chicken. How, what do you think? It's good. It's juicy. Do you hear that? Plenty of flavor, so I know that it was brined right. I don't want to see how handsome you are, especially when you eat chicken. I mean, oh, you always pick the worst things for me to eat. <laughs> No, um, um I need someone to look, you know, a little more, just as sloppy as I am, that's why. I know, this is definitely a messy thing, as we know. Fried chicken is not the cleanest food. But it's portable. It is. It's ridiculously easy to make. Um, literally the most uh, intensive part is just waiting for it to brine. And then you get to fry. It's literally, get some, you know, water, mix up the spices, let the chicken soak in it for a bit, then you just take a flour mixture, dredge the chicken in it directly out of the brine, and fry it. And there you have it, fried chicken. Couldn't be easier. And it's flaky and the perfect consistency throughout. I mean, look at this. And there's so much flavor going on in this chicken. I just can't get over how juicy the chicken itself is. It's just loaded with juice. It's to die for delicious. I feel like this would win a competition if it was entered into a competition, easily. So there you have it guys, fried chicken done super easily. All you really need is some chicken, some flour, and some spices, and you're ready to go. And it's great any time of year. If you feel like picnicking a little early on your rooftop or in your backyard this year, by all means, definitely do it. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, check out PressureLawCooking.com because I have a ton of recipes there. Definitely check out Facebook.com slash PressureLawCooking and like that page for any time a new recipe comes out, you'll know it'll drop there. And of course, at PressureLaw for YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. Most definitely get my cookbook, The Step by step instant pot cookbook as well. You don't want to miss that anywhere books are sold, online or in stores, whenever you can get to one. Thank you so much again, guys. And remember, if it's some chicken that you're buying, you're going to be real, real happy when it goes a frying. I'll see you real soon. Take care. Enjoy.